doing something called uh, Charlene Chen. Oh, the daughter. Of yeah, and um, the Char the Charlie Apana project was the first script I ever developed with a very the first script I ever developed, and I developed it with a very talented writer's name is Chris Young, and um, the project was eventually uh, sold to John Wu and Terence Chen as a as a property for Chai Yun Fat. So in, in one way, it was brings great satisfaction because the genesis of the idea was when Chang and Fat was just coming into Hollywood and I was just thinking of different ideas and the, the idea of Chang Apana, the real Hawaiian cop who carried a black snake whip instead of, you know, really, really, uh, you know, pithy phrases. Uh, that was a great idea when we sold that project and I know that it's still, it's still being kicked around over, over there and that should they make it one day then I'd be called upon you know, as an attachment. Who knows where it's been, but, but I'm a big fan of Charlie Pond. And of course, um, you know, every property that you develop as a producer carries a special weight in your heart. And, uh, you know, the, the, the ones that I truly care about the most are the ones that we're developing at Orb. And so, in a way, in a way, um, I feel like my career is just starting with Orb. And you described me as successful. Um, it's not something that I necessarily think about me. I've successfully endured. I've successfully held my ground. And I've successfully pulled myself up from uh, sometimes very uh, difficult situations, many of them of my own making. But the fact that I'm still standing and I'm still believing and I still believe in making things happen, I suppose that's one measure of success. The Legend of Two Rivers is the Silk Road franchise that's distinct from the Shaolin. And, um, you know, I, I worked very closely with the Shaolin Temple. Um, I've gotten to know them over a four-year period. It's pretty, pretty lengthy. And um, it's really born out of uh, great respect I have for the abbot of the Shaolin Temple. What he's doing to um, revolutionize and recreate and recast a 1,500-year legacy for the modern world. So um, we're building multiple Shaolin-themed franchises right now in motion pictures, in online games, in live events, in after products, uh, and uh, even distance learning and online education. So we're covering a whole gamut of Shaolin-themed content, and um, this will be one of the things hitting the market from the orb side. a big project of ours. And we're, we're choosing things very carefully. We're choosing things um, on the ability of a story to be told through some of the most com compelling and viable platforms. So the, the, uh, the DAO project, it's now called the DAO, mm. is our superhero project. And you'll be hearing more about that as we begin to unveil it to the rest of the world. I know Jeff from his days with, uh, with A, A Magazine, and um, Jerry Ma, one of the illustrators, and I think editors of that superhero companion, actually gave me a copy of it at Comic-Con this year. Um, so I'm a fan of what they're doing, and we're developing our, also our own comic book series based on it. So I'm a fan of them, but we haven't yet partnered um, together, but I think we've been beating to the um, We've been heeding the same call for a need for uh, heroes, Asian heroes, that all people can aspire to, not just Asian Americans. And that's an important differentiator. So when you ask me, who are my heroes, I learned at a very young age, at least in politics, that there's different kinds of politics. You can be a Jesse Jackson, or you can be a Barack Obama. So I think in this day and age, there's an opportunity for Asians to step out, to be a leader, not just Asians, but just to be a leader, period. And I think those are the kind of heroes that Asian America or Asia really needs. We need someone to step, with, to step out and really, um, really serve even a larger constituency beyond skin color. And if we can emulate that, I think whether, whatever our, our objectives are, whether it's bringing awareness to Asian American issues or et cetera, by stepping out and, and being powerful 
in addressing the needs of a lot of larger spectrum, that seems to be something that is uh, very, very compelling. Um, that's a, you know, I love that project. It's not slated as a, as one of our primaries right now because, you know, in this town we're always competing for the best time frame to tell the most stories. The Lost Years is an incredible story. However, it's a story that's taking shape over at Alcon Entertainment faster than we could do it here. And the Lost Years is a story, it's a hidden se story of Jesus spending his last years that were ne never described in the Bible. Because in the Bible we, we see him as a young man, as a, as a boy, and then a young man. So the question is, whatever happened to the Lost Years is very, very good information that Jesus actually spent his last years at the foot of Buddhist and Hindu masters in Tibet, in India, and in, and in Egypt. So the Lost Years is a story of the Christ that we know today and according to many, many historians, what he did during those years that made him the Christ. And uh, if that story were told, and I think it will be told, it would revolutionize the idea of interreligious tolerance. When, you real, when we realize that Jesus today, that is now used by many organized churches to denounce other faiths as satanic, was at one point, um, he's a recipient and a student of Eastern learnings that made him the Christ. On my way, starting the day.